Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Reaper 5.24 is out now, and although it is a small update, there are a few very important and very helpful things included in this update. You can look in the help menu at the change log to see everything that's new. Uh, for now, I'm just going to show you some of the highlights. In the category of automation, we have a new preference for adding edge points when you move items. You can find that option in the preferences, looking at these three options here for adding edge points when we're editing. And you can also right click in the main toolbar, this button here, and we now have six options here. Uh, in the last version, we had five options. So we're looking at this add edge points when moving envelope points with items. Let's zoom in right here and I'm just going to move this and watch right here as I move this item. It automatically adds in an edge point and automation further down here is not going to change. And the same thing happens over on this side. There's a now an editing point there and so that uh, changes further down in the track don't get adjusted. So if I put in a change like that and drag this, it's not going to make weird ramps or anything like that. So it's going to keep it intact. So that's the first change that I want to show you, something small but helpful. Next, let's look at dynamic split. I've got a button on my toolbar to open up the dynamic split window. You can also go from the view menu and it's right here in the menu dynamic split. This is a tool you can use to generate stretch markers or cuts in your items. In this update, they have improved the analysis and the speed of generating your markers. But also, there's this new option, add transient guide markers to items. So transient guide markers are kind of a visual clue of where the transients are in your items without making a split or without adding in a stretch marker. You can generate them through the dynamic split window. And uh, remember to check your transient sensitivity because that is where those markers are going to be. I'm doing multiple tracks at once, and these are 96 kilohertz files. So a lot of data to run through, and it's, it uh, generates those within a couple seconds. So these transient guide markers, let's just hit generate guides. And I'll zoom in on these real close. If you can see that, it's a little like, uh, kind of like a, two arrows pointing at each other. And we can click on these and it'll promote it to a stretch marker. But if I grab one of these, the um, transient detection markers don't actually generate any stretching. So if I move this one, this stretch marker doesn't move, but these transient markers stay with the original transient. I'm going to undo that. And I can also show you that item context menu. When you right click and you go to stretch markers, we also have transient guides available here. Calculate transient guides, calculate just for the visible area, and clear transient guides. Of course, the action list has transient guides. Just type in transient. So those three actions are also in the action list. And just a reminder of that uh, transient detection setting, you can find that window, uh, again, even without opening up dynamic split. One more thing I want to show you with that. If you don't like that green color, you can change that. Uh, just scroll through here and look for um, stretch marker transient guide handles. And you can change that to whatever color. So let's change that to red. And there we go. And this, now red dots, we could change that to pink, and there you go. Okay, so that's transient guides. Another great new feature, something that I am pretty excited about, takes now follow grouping. So if you have multiple simultaneously recorded tracks where the items are grouped across multiple tracks and you change a take on one of the tracks, the grouped items will also change. So for example, I'm going to open up show all takes in lanes when there's room. So I have two take lanes for each of these eight tracks. 
I'm going to make a split with S. I'm going to click to change the take. I can click somewhere else, go to another take. And as you can see, takes are following my clicking, not just on the one track that I'm clicking on, but all of the grouped tracks. Working with takes is going to be a lot easier going forward. And this is just a great update. One really small change that they've done is this image here in the effects chain. This little checkbox was not very visible. They've now added a little outline for when this is selected, you can see that it's on. And just for comparison, I'm going to open up the previous version of Reaper so you can see side by side how those look. Side by side, we have 5.24 here with this little white outline around the check mark. And in Reaper 5.23, you can barely see that black check mark there. So this tiny change should make your effects chains a lot more easy to use, no matter which theme you're using. They have also done some changes to uh, effects windows. So if you uh, stretch out a window and double click in the blank area, it's going to snap to the window size of the plugin. They have done a lot of little tweaks to make things like Melodyne and some of the Melda production plugins uh, work correctly on all platforms, as well as uh, UAD plugins for Mac. They've uh, fixed things like where the scroll bars are appearing and so nothing's cut off anymore. Everything should work perfectly. Of course, if there's this particular plugin that is not uh, working for you, post on the forum and make sure that uh, your voice is heard and that bug can be fixed. One final thing that I want to show you today is if you go to the File menu and Export Project MIDI, you can now export a MIDI file, whether you have MIDI in your project or not. And with that file, you can generate the tempo map. So your markers, your regions, any tempo changes you have can be exported as a MIDI file without having to generate a MIDI track first. And that is it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the website with a Patreon donation. And please visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.